Loopback is a highly extensible framework for building APIs in Node.js. In this video, I'm going to show you how to get started working with Loopback version 4 by setting up a simple RESTful API using the Loopback command line interface or CLI. Don't forget to hit that like button and please subscribe to the channel. And now let's jump into it. We're going to get started by installing the Loopback command line interface. npm install, we're going to install this CLI globally. So this is minus G and this is at loopback slash CLI. Okay, now that we have the loopback version four CLI installed, let's create a new application. So this is LB4 and this is app. Okay, first we need to enter the project name. Let's say books API. We're going to add a description. Let's say books rest API. The project root directory will be books API. And the application class name, we're going to use the default value books API application. And here we can select different options for our project. We can enable, for example, ESLint, pre tier. VS Code, we're going to leave all selected. We have some other options such as Docker, enabling repositories, services, I'm going to continue. And this is going to generate the initial structure of the project. Okay, now let's enter to the project folder. And now let's open Visual Studio Code. Okay, now let's take a look at the initial structure of the project. For example, we have the TS config file to compile our TypeScript code. Then we're going to have a Docker file to build a Docker image of our project. Here we have an index file that is going to initialize our application. Remember that we created the application by using this main class. This is the entry point of our application. And we also have controllers by default is going to create this pin controller. So if we run the project, npm run start, our loopback server is going to run on port 3000 and we can test our loopback API by calling this endpoint. Okay, now let's go to Postman. And from here, we're going to execute a get request on this endpoint, the port 3000 slash ping. And as we can see here, we get a greeting, hello from Loopback, the date, the URL, and some headers. And basically, that is what we are returning here. A greeting, the date, the URL, and the headers that we receive in the request. Okay, now if we open the application in localhost 3000, we can see that Loopback is going to generate this openapi.json file. That is the API definition using the open API specification. Here we have our ping endpoint, and this is the definition for the get method, where we have the controller name, the operation name, we have some tags, and we have the response definition with this schema, the ping response. And if we take a look at the schemas, here we have the ping response that contains the reading, the day, the URL, and the headers. And there's another endpoint that is actually a Swagger UI, so from here, we can also try our ping endpoint and I can execute a get request to this endpoint. And as we can see here, we get the greeting, the data URL and all the headers that are sent from this Swagger UI. And this is the open API definition for this endpoint. This is actually the schema definition for the ping response that includes the greeting of type string, the date, the URL and the headers. This is a high level architecture diagram of a loopback application. In this video, I'm just going to implement the controller. I'm going to implement the repository that will be connected to our model. Our model will be a book with a simple ID, a title, and the list of authors. The repository will be connected with the data source and the data source will be connected to an in-memory database. We can also implement controllers and we can connect a service proxy and for example, we can connect this service proxy with a data source connected to a REST API or a SOAP web service, for example. And we can also connect the controllers with some other local services. 
and all these components will be connected with each other using dependency injection. So the controller is going to inject a repository as a dependency. The repository is going to inject the data source as a dependency. And the same if we want to implement a controller with a service proxy, the controller is going to inject the service proxy and the same with the local services. So first, we're going to create a new model. So this is LB4 model. And the class name for our model will be book. Here we can select either a persistent entity or a business domain object. I'm going to select entity. Allow additional freeform properties, yes. So first we're going to add an ID for this book. This will be a number. Is ID the ID property? Yes, we're going to plug this property as the identifier for the entity. Yes, we're going to make this automatically generated. Now we're going to add a title of the book. This will be a string. And it's going to be required. Now we can set the list of authors of the book. So this is authors. The type will be an array. And this will be an array of objects. And we're going to make the authors property required. And we're going to leave this property empty so that we finish setting up our model. And that's it. So if we go to source models, we should see that new file, this one, book.model.ts. And we're going to see all the properties. Here we have the ID, we have the title, and we have the array of authors. And as you can see here, our class is going to extend from an entity class that is part of the loopback framework. And it's going to also add this model decorator. Okay, now let's add a new data source. A data source will allow us to connect our application to a database. This is LB4 data source. And we are going to assign a name to it. The data source name will be, let's say, database. And here we have multiple options as the data source for our application. We have in-memory DB, in-memory key value connector. We have some IBM databases, PouchDB, Redis, Mongo, MySQL, Postgres, Oracle, Microsoft SQL, and some others. I'm going to select an in-memory database, in-memory DB, this one. In the local search key to use for persistence, I'm going to leave this empty. Full path to file for persistence. I'm going to leave this empty. Let's take a look at the database.datasource file. And this is going to generate this configuration with this connector that indicates that it's an in-memory database. And here is going to generate this class that is going to extend this data source that is part of the loopback framework. Okay, now that we have the model, we have the data source. Now let's add a new repository. So this is LB4 repository. And here we need to select the data source. Then our case is the database data source. And now we need to select the model that in this case is book. And here we can extend this default CRUD repository class that is provided by the loopback framework to create new books, retrieve books, update books, and delete books. I'm going to select this option. And it's going to generate our repository class. So let's go to repositories here. And let's go to book.repository.ts. And here we have the book repository class that extends the default CRUD repository class provided by Loopback with our model, that is the book model. And here we have the injection or the dependency injection of our data source. OK, and now that we have the model, we have the data source, we have the repository connected to both the data source and the model, we are going to create a new controller for the books. So this is LB4 controller. The controller class name will be book. And here we can select an empty controller and add the endpoints ourselves, or we can select a REST controller with the CRUD functions, create, retrieve, update, and delete. I'm going to select the second option. And the name of the model is book. So I'm going to select book here. 
and I will select book repository as the repository. And what is the name of the ID property? ID. So I'm going to keep that as it is. And the type is number. Here we can select if the ID is submitted when creating a new instance. We're going to say yes. What is the base HTTP path name of the crude operations? Books. We're going to keep slash books. And that's it. We have our controller. Let's take a look at the controller class. So here we have our book controller class. Here we have the book repository as a dependency. The book controller is going to interact with the repository to create new books, update books, retrieve books, and delete books. So let's take a look at the different endpoints. First, we have the post books endpoint to create new books. We have the open API schema definition here for the request body. And basically it's going to interact with the book repository using the create method to create a new book. This is another endpoint generated by the loopback API. A slash books slash count is going to return the number of records, in this case, the number of books. So it's going to interact with the book repository and it's going to call the count method. We also have the get endpoint to get the list of books. We have a patch method. We also have this endpoint to get a book by ID. We have a patch endpoint, we have a put endpoint, and we also have the delete endpoint here. And now if we take a look at the API Explorer again, we're gonna find the Swagger UI, including all the endpoints of our API. Let's call the post endpoint to create a new book. I'm going to pass this title, and I'm going to pass an array with just a single object with the name of the author. Okay, I'm going to execute the post request, and here we get the response, we get a 200. And now if we call the get endpoint, we should get a single element in the array. Okay. And here we can get that book by ID. Yes, we get that element. We can count the number of books. We should get one. Yes, we get one as a result. And we can also update books. So let's say my test book test author two. Let's send this both request. Yes, this is authors actually. We get a 204. And now let's get the book by ID to see if we get these new values. So let's call this endpoint. And yes, as we can see here, we were able to update the record. And now let's delete the book. So I'm going to call using the delete HTTP method, we get 204, and now if we call the get endpoint, we should get an empty array. Yes. That's all I have for today. Thank you guys for watching, and I see you in the next one. Take care. Bye.